Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Ah, uh, you know, we just did our uh, mid-season report card for Ohio State on the Monday episode. So if you haven't seen that yet, or if you haven't listened to that yet, I highly recommend that. That was a lot of fun. It was, I'll, I'll, s- listen, spoiler alert, it was mostly positive. It was very positive. I think Ohio State's doing great. But they had the, they had this week off. They had this week off. So we have a lot of games. Actually, we, I, actually in, in all, you missed the football category. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, fullback. Fullback. Fullbacks are tight ends. It's it's 2022. Get over it. Um, I was about to say that uh, we have a lot of games to talk about, but that's a that's a lie. I think that's a lie. Because a lot of teams, not just Ohio State, a lot of teams had bye weeks this week. So um, we don't necessarily have a ton of games to get to, but we do have a ton of questions. We have a, we have a we have a bunch of questions to get to, and uh, our tier list after after a pretty crazy week, a lot of uh, rank on ranks. So I think our tier list probably needs a lot of maintenance. So let's go ahead does, and let's yeah. let's let's start talking about these games, and then we'll get to the tier list, and then we'll get to the questions, and then we'll play the Ohio Weather Band, and then the show will be over. All right, sounds. Like a I'm just all like right, a let's... novel. I give it. I give a chapter list at the beginning. All right, let's let's start from the top here. Uh, first, uh, I guess it's kind of odd saying this here, but it's our first um, of the week. Uh, Team Chaos takes another soul here. Oklahoma over ranked Kansas, fifty-two to forty-two. Listen, um, it's it's a fun day. It's a fun day. <laughs> When you could, you can say that Oklahoma upset Kansas. And could someone please drop a new GIF so that that one scrolls out? I would appreciate it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, that's a. I guess that's a big win for Oklahoma. It's a big comeback for. They're they're going to do the thing, Kyle, where they just don't listen to me, and now no one's going to type any. Okay, they they. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma, uh, I guess they needed a bit of a bounce back game. Uh, they've had a couple rough weeks and, you know, they get to upset Kansas's season, I guess. Weird, weird, weird I, times. I guess 20, 2022 yeah, I, is a I weird ass year, man. Yeah, well, this, this was my my pick of a unranked team beating a ranked team here. Uh, so I got some more points there, Jared. Yeah. I haven't hit on one of those yet. No, you haven't. All right. Uh, Illinois. Fighting Burt's, Jared. The Fighting Burt's continuing their rampage. Uh, beating Minnesota. They're in the top 20 now, aren't they? Did they crap? Did, that? crap? did they crack the top 20, Illinois, with this win? Yeah, in the AP? they were 24th. They were 24th. Yeah, but after the win. After the win. Um. Yeah, before the win, they were 24th, and now they are 18th. Yeah. Oklahoma upset Kansas because Kansas was the team ranked in the top 20 and not Oklahoma. And now Illinois is in the top 20. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota has just been... Uh, injured. Well, they don't, they, yeah. it's, it's 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 an injured football team here they they're they're junk without eber just 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 say it plainly kyle you don't have to dance around it without ibrahim they're junk well he he did play he did play but and he had a, himself a good game 15 rushes for 127 yards he had himself a pretty good game here but but Morgan, uh, their quarterback, Tanner Morgan, went down. Yep. And yeah, it's it's just not a. Yeah, what, was that really what the stat was? I knew he didn't. I knew he didn't do that well. But was that the actual stat he he had? Are you looking it up? Uh, Zach says he's four four for twenty two for forty five yards. 
are, are you four looking... for 12 four for, four for 12, 12 for 21 yards okay in a pick yeah because he he didn't play that much because he got because he got hurt um but yeah like they get ibrahim back and then they lose tanner morgan it's the 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 luck is not with minnesota this year because yeah. when they, when they had both of them they were looking like a pretty solid you know big 10 west team at the beginning that, of the year but yeah that boat has many many holes right now kyle michigan dominates penn state um at the end of the I, first half at the end of the first half the score wouldn't have shown it um but if you were watching the game, like Penn State was insanely lucky. I'll say lucky. Insanely lucky to have been yeah, Clifford sucks. He, he just sucks, no matter. I'm not even gonna say he's overrated. He just sucks. Michigan was dominated the first half, even if that didn't show up in the stat sheet. I I don't have the number in front of me, but I think at the first half, it was like 18 first downs to one. Yeah, it was bad. It was, it was something not- crazy like that. Um, and, and then Michigan finally, you know, fixed their red zone issues, stopped kicking field goals, started scoring touchdowns. And, uh, you know, they eventually took the game over in the second half. Yep, they did. And and with over 400 rushing yards against Penn State. Yeah. And, and, and at the time, Penn State was a top 10 Rushing defense, and yes, before anybody says it in the chat, yes, I know, I know they haven't really played anybody in the year, but still, you remember when Ohio you State let, you let you let up over four hundred rushing yards. Remember when Ohio State beat like I think they were eight and O Michigan State last year, and everyone's like, oh, Ohio State picks up a top ten win, and like we were like, yeah, but. Like we understand that this was a a, a a pretty okay Big Ten team who was in the top ten, but like no, we're, we're not, we're not really. Gonna, we're not going to we're not going to pull that where where all the games are tough in the Big Ten. No, 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 no. That's that's absolutely not what I'm saying. I'm saying last year when Ohio State beat Michigan State, who was a top ten team, you and I we were very realistic about the fact that Michigan state, despite being undefeated, wasn't actually all that good. I mean, look at, look at this. That, year I'm just Ohio drawing in Notre Dame, but that's different because Michigan state was like eight and O and I'm just drawing a parallel that's between true. that game and Penn state, who was, I believe six and O coming into this football game. Um, that's true. I mean, I'm just drawing a parallel between Ohio state's, supposed top 10 victory last year against Michigan state and Penn state and Michigan's supposed top 10 victory over Penn state this year. I just, I, I didn't want anyone to just be like, Oh, you're just saying that because it's Michigan, but Penn, a it's top 10, a top 10 team, still a top 10 team. Okay. Yeah. But we did, we literally did the same thing when Ohio state trounced Michigan state last year. So just, just, it's just so, it's just so weird. This Penn state team. Yeah. Just absolutely dominated. And, every aspect of this game here. This is that same Penn state team that went down South and absolutely destroyed Auburn earlier Aub- in the year too. Auburn's garbage though. Uh, FPI S plus so, perhaps. So then, yeah. No, no so, matter so if you have, brings- if you have those rankings, drop them in the chat. I I'd, I'd like to see them. So then that brings up the question here that no Buckeye fan wants to talk about though. This Michigan team. How how good are they here now that you you've seen them against a a quality opponent here? Yes, Penn State might not be as great as they have a pulse the ranked was, but still it's still a quality opponent, and they just absolutely had their way with them. Yeah, a, a, a horribly overrated team, but um, I think Michigan has an excellent stable of running backs. I think they have two great running backs. Um, I think I had, I think I, I think I had said a bunch of times that Corum was like a pretty okay running back behind a great offensive line. Um, 
I, I no longer think that. I think he's actually like a very good running back. I think Corum is actually a very good running back. I think the Michigan offensive line are tremendous top tier run blockers. Um, I think that they are. You know, if they're if they're tremendous run blockers, I think they're like above average, pretty good, um, pretty good pass blockers. I don't think they're anything special from a pass blocking standpoint, but they're also not like bad pass blockers, right? Um, the wide receivers are fine. Um, I think they're fine. Um, JJ McCarthy, I think is maybe the best quarterback that Michigan has had under Harbaugh. But if I'm being honest, that says a lot more about the other quarterbacks than it does JJ McCarthy, who I think is okay. Again, so that, that there's a, he just, he, he clears a low bar. You want another low bar to clear for JJ McCarthy? I think he's, is he? Is it fair to say he's the second best quarterback in the Big Ten right now? Yeah, it it, it definitely is. And and you look but at his numbers. We here. really need to talk about how low of a bar that is. The the Big Ten quarterbacks this year are garbage. Yeah, it's 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 Stroud, it's McCarthy, and then it's a complete cliff. It's Stroud, a complete cliff. McCarthy, a complete cliff. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's look at the numbers here, Jared. No. McCarthy no. has thrown for almost 13 yard 1300 yards and completed 77%. 77% of his passes so far this year. He's a dink and dunker though. He's a total dink and dunker. That's like saying JT Barrett had an amazing completion percentage, which he did by the way. But that was never throwing the ball more than 10 yards past the line of scrimmage. He's a dink and dunker. I, his completion percentage does nothing for me. Again, I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's the second best quarterback in the Big Ten. And I yeah, also his, don't. I also yeah. don't think he would be. He also wouldn't beat out Kyle McCord if they both transferred to the same school next year. He wouldn't beat out Kyle McCord, let alone C.J. Stroud. But what I mean, but one thing about J.J. McCarthy though is just his running capability too. Like he's, he's a very, like when he gets yeah. out in space, it's, it's hard catching up to him. He's a really quick quarterback. Uh, it's, but yeah, this is, this is a much dangerous, more dangerous Michigan team than, uh, than I'll, I'll give credit to the beginning of the year. Um, they're off it. Jared mentioned it. Offensive lines are really good. Uh, their running game has um, really, really good as well. And Mark Carthy is doing what he needs to do to, um, yeah. Get the ball to his playmakers. Yeah. Um, and the defense, I don't know. I, I we can talk about what Michigan did to Penn State's defense, because I do think Penn State has a lot of talent on the defense. So we can talk about that. We can have that conversation. But as far as Michigan's Michigan's defense goes against Penn State's offense. Penn State's offense is terrible. So um, I, I don't think this was a good game to evaluate that. I think, quite frankly, you could go look at the uh, Michigan and it was Maryland, right? That they got passed all over. Um, is that right? Yeah, Spike says, yeah. Like Maryland, especially uh, two is out for the year now, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the Maryland that Michigan played was a much, much better offense than the Penn State offense that Michigan played. The, the, the Penn State offense is garbage. Let's Clifford. Clifford's what happens if you buy JT Barrett off of wish.com. It's. That's it. Like they, right. they, they need to recognize that and, and go just go to guys. You just got your, you got your shit kicked in. 
Penn State. This is this is me talking to Penn State fans uh, and, and and maybe coaches. If any coaches are watching, and no, no no coaches are watching, maybe someone clip this, send it to them. You got your shit kicked in. It's over. It's over. Ohio State's going to kick your shit in too. Pack pack the season up. Pack the season up. Go with Aller. Go with all, go, go with Drew Allar. All air. I can't say his name right now. It's all air. Drew All Air. Just just pack it up. It's okay. You're Penn State. You're you are never gonna finish higher than third in the Big Ten East anyway. If you invest in your future, it'll pay dividends. Bench Clifford now. Not tomorrow. Not after Ohio State. Now. Now, now. Now. All right. All right. Let's let's move on to the other games real quick here, Jared. Uh Ole Miss uh beats Auburn 48 to 34. And we talked about Penn State beat demolishing Auburn earlier in the year. And Ole Miss beats him by by 14 in this game. Yeah, um, I, I didn't pay much attention to this game. Auburn kind of gave him a bit of a run. Um, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm not I don't feel like I'm going to completely shit on Ole Miss for it. Ole Miss is one of these teams and there's a bunch of them. They're one of these teams who are in the top 10 because nobody else is there to put in the top 10. In, in most true. seasons. In most seasons, Ole Miss would be a real good number 15, but the, 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 the middle of college football, anything past like the fifth or sixth team, they're basically all the same. And mm-hmm. Ole Miss is just one of those teams. Yeah. They're, they're going to, they're, they're probably going to finish the season with one loss to Alabama. <laughs> hmm. You've, whew. I don't know their schedule, and I and I also don't want to. I also don't want to. LSU, Texas A and M, Alabama, Arkansas, and Mississippi State. And then they'll they'll drop another one. Like they should win all of those, except for except for one. But they'll drop another one just just cause attrition, just cause attrition. All right, Texas narrowly yeah. escapes Iowa State twenty four to twenty one. Yeah, it turns out, I mean, uh, like Texas is not, is not back. I like, I like Iowa State. I like their coaching staff. I like what they do there. This is a rebuilding year for them. This is a rebuilding year for Iowa State. Like, you're not going to get enough recruits at Iowa State that you're going to be good every year. Sometimes they need to pack the season in and develop for next year. And that's that's what they're doing right now. Um, if, if Texas was properly back, they would have killed this Iowa State team. And like Texas is a much better football team with yours at quarterback. We've ha- we have enough evidence of that at this point, but this was not a good Quinn Ewers game. He, he was not great, um, but whatever, like it's they'll, they're, they're still trying to figure their shit out at Texas. I mean, it's yep. this Texas team. I think we always knew w- was gunning for 2023. Mm-hmm. I think that's. Right, uh, I think everyone Syracuse, knew that. Syracuse beats North Carolina State twenty four to nine. So NC State North without Car- Leary is done. Period. Yeah, we can move on after that. NC State's done now. The, no yeah, Leary, no great, NC State. They, they have a good defense, but they don't have an off. They don't have an offense led by their coordinator Tim Beck. They don't stand a chance right now. Uh, Georgia Georgia defeats Vanderbilt fifty five to nothing. Good job, Georgia. Nothing more, not, nothing more proud to of be you. said there. All right. The big game here. Tennessee. Yes, yes. Beat, finally beats Alabama this century. 52 to 49. It, wasn't, it was 15 years. I don't think it was. It went all the way back to the 90s. I think it was 15 years. Or, was, well, they don't. It, what, they don't what? play them every year, Jared. They don't play that, them every year. 2006 is what Zach is saying. Are you sure? 
they kept saying 15 years. And, and Nomad is saying, yes, they do play each other every year. Dedicated cross rival. There you go. And they weren't saying a 15 game lose loss streak. They were saying 15 years. So, yes. Anyway, Kyle, it's fine. It's fine. We're moving forward. Um, yeah. Bama has a very suspect pass defense. We knew this. Alabama, while their offensive line is a great run blocking offensive line, they are not great at pass blocking. And we already knew this. Uh, Tennessee was just good enough to put it all together to actually finish the game. We saw Texas prove this. We saw Texas A&M prove this. But those teams weren't good enough, especially again, if Texas had had hadn't lost Quinn Ewers part of the way through that game. I still think Texas wins that game. Uh, Bama just needed to face a team that was good enough to make them pay for not being good pass blockers, for not having good wide receivers, uh, for not having a good secondary. Bama also only has Gibbs. I mean, Gibbs is amazing and he's absolutely their best offensive threat to say. They only have Gibbs, I think takes away from what Bryce young brings to the team. Cause I do think Bryce young is a very, very good quarterback, but I, I mean, the Heisman last year. <laughs> yeah, but. He's a very good quarterback. You he can is. say blasphemy all you want, no man. He's a very good quarterback. Um, but when Bama's going to face a team with even a good secondary, his wide receivers aren't going to help him out. Mm -hmm. These are facts. Yep. Jameson right. Williams uh, did not show up again this year. No, he did not. All right, so moving on here, uh, moving over to the Big 12, the Big 12 matchup. So we had the Big 10 matchup, SEC matchup, now we have the Big 12. TCU beats Oklahoma State 43-40 to 40 in double overtime. Yeah. Um, it looked like Oklahoma State was going to run away with this game at one point. Total looked look like a total smash grab runaway. Yes, okay. OK, State did cover Nomad. You were, you were correct about that. Um, but this this felt this felt like a Big 12 game. I mean, quite frankly, the Alabama and Tennessee game also felt like a Big 12 game. Like, just for being honest, um, it's just sort of like defenses need not apply sort of football game. Um, lots of points scored at the very end of the games. It's just kind of how college football works sometimes nowadays, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It's it's becoming like a really big trope really big cliche of like whoever has the ball last um which is a shame like i don't think <laughs> we're we're watching the alabama tennessee game during the social screen in our discord server discord.thesleepcast.com we were watching the game a bunch of us were watching the game together um and i <sighs> man like we were actually strategizing at one point for Tennessee who was Bama still had the ball inside their own territory. And we're all sitting there watching it going, I just let them score. <laughs> and we were being dead serious. Like if they pass the ball to Gibbs, just get the fuck out. Of, just just fall over. You've been doing it all game anyway. No one would even sus. No, no one would even suspect anything. He's been juking you out of your shoes all night. Just fall over. Let him score. Let him get the touchdown. Get the ball back with enough time for you to go get the touchdown. Uh, then their kicker missed the field goal and everything worked out. And then Tennessee with. I mean, this, this is just a huge. Problem with not just Alabama, but college football as a whole. Tennessee had. Was it 13 seconds? Something stupid like that. And they took the ball like 40. 
15 seconds, Nomad says. They took the ball something, Nomad, I might need your correction on this one again, something like 40 yards in those 15 seconds to set up a field goal. How do you... You... We need more defensive backs in college football. <laughs> it is so hard to play pass defense in college football nowadays. It is. It really is. You have to do kind of like, hmm, like a, you have to kind of make, create a shell. I think they tried. I think it's the problem. All right. Sparty, Jared. This, this, this is a first for Ohio State this year. Uh, the team that Ohio State beat finally won the week after they get um, defeated by Ohio State. Uh, Sparty defeats Wisconsin 34 to 28 in double overtime. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little sad to see the uh, the Buckeye curse fail. Uh, but as Kyle points out, Michigan State's the first team to not lose right after losing to Ohio State. Um, <laughs> but, but the their president pre resigned, so I count it. <laughs> I don't think the president resigns because of football. There are <laughs> universities first. But you know what? Fuck it. Let's count it. Um, yeah, it did take them two overtimes for what it's worth. It did. It did. And Ohio State also beat Wisconsin at one point. So Ohio State, every opponent who's lost to Ohio State has turned around and lost the next week, assuming that other team wasn't also broken by Ohio State. It's not right, transitive let's... properties. That's just adding additional qualifiers. All right, let's let's move on to the uh, the next game here. LSU defeats Florida forty five to thirty five. I didn't watch a second of this football game. I don't care. You don't care. All right, uh, Clemson. I, I had Clemson and Florida State on one TV, and I had uh, USC Utah on my laptop. All right, well, let's talk about Clemson and uh, Florida State then, Jared. Clemson defeats Florida State 34 to 28. Kyle, I, I needed it. I thought it was, it was finally going to get on the board for our Choose Your Chaos competition. I needed it. It was it was well out of reach here. I'm, I'm looking here. It was 34 to 14. Yeah. Until it wasn't. The fourth quarter and yeah, and Florida State made it a game. They made it a game in the in the fourth quarter, couldn't, but not couldn't, enough. Couldn't quite close it. Couldn't quite close it. Yeah, I needed it though. I was watching. I never turned it off. I needed it. All right, all right. I'm going to run these last ones real quick here. Um, another ranked opponent here: Kentucky defeats Mississippi State twenty-seven to seventeen. Did you watch any of that, Jared? It was. It was like a real Iowa football game for a long time. Um, I, I, I just didn't <laughs> care. Yeah. End of the third quarter, it was 10 to 13. Yes, there was. All right. Uh, Notre Dame, Jared. What a... Notre Dame loses to Stanford 14 to 16. Kyle is... How, what does Marcus Freeman need to do? Because I think they're not going to fire him at the end of the year. They're not going to fire him after his first year. What does Marcus Freeman need to do? Score points. To I think the, not be fired at the end of next season. He, he, need, he needs an offense that could score points. Because, like, defensively, it's not that terrible. Because they they let up um, they let up sixteen in this one. They let up twenty in the previous one. Uh, UNC was just a big shootout. Um, let up seventeen against Cal. They they haven't been letting up like a terrible amount of points, but it's their offense that needs yeah. to get the ball rolling here. And they no longer have I mean, their guy I mean, who is I supposed mean, to be their starting quarterback. Yeah. We need to point that out. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, that's that's going to hurt them on on the offense, and their and their current quarterback is just not doing it. He was thirteen for twenty seven in this game for one hundred fifty one yards. 
we, that's, we, not we, good, that's not going to do it for you. We touched on it briefly during the Monday episode because we got a little sidetracked as we do sometimes. Most teams, the vast majority of teams in college football don't have two quarterbacks. Nope. Uh, and this is this is an example. NC State doesn't have two quarterbacks. Notre Dame doesn't have two quarterbacks. Um, Bama ha- has a we do though. Yes, 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 we do. Nomad. Absolutely, we do. Uh, thank Kyle McCord for not leaving. I mean, I don't know how, how great I'd feel about putting uh, Brown on the field right now He's, as a true freshman. I feel like that would be a pretty big downgrade. Um, but I, as great as CJ Stroud did, as great as CJ Stroud is, and as much as I love him as a as the quarterback at Ohio State, I think Ohio State, if they needed to, could put Kyle McCord in and be back up to full strength in a couple games of just him getting his feet wet. Uh, Cause yeah. Kyle McCord's that good. All right. And the last game here. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, this is, this is a um, team chaos here. Utah defeats USC, give them their first loss of the year. 43 to 42 off of a two point conversion um, late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They, one. I, I, Utah gets a late touchdown and they said, nah, we're going to end it right here one way or the other. And they went for two and they got it. Um, Hey man, it's, I've been saying it since the beginning of the year. USC is just Oklahoma with yellow trim. Caleb Williams had a pretty good game. I'm, I'm looking at the stats here. Caleb Williams. You mean the former Oklahoma quarterback? <laughs> yeah, he put he put some yellow stripe on him. Uh, 381 yards and five touchdowns in this game. Yeah, despite what uh, some people on our Discord server might have to say about the subject, Caleb Williams had a great game. Um, it's the defense that failed them. It's the defense. 43, but 43 but, points. But that's just Oklahoma, right? Yeah, that's true. No, it's the that's defense, true. Nomad. It's the defense. They have none. It's just Oklahoma all over again. Yeah, they, it's they just were averaging USC is Oklahoma with yellow trim. Six and a half yards per rushing attempt. But that's that's pretty good, but <laughs> yeah. Don't need to say any more. All right. So that's that's all the games I honestly care about to talk about in this one. So Team Chaos uh, only took a couple here. Only took a couple. Uh, but it was hard because yeah, there really wasn't even that many no. like unranked teams playing ranked teams this week with all the bye weeks there, and with all of the yeah, rank on wasn't. ranks. There wasn't. But let's go ahead and get into our tier list after week seven. So first off the gate, Jared, let's let's remove some teams. Let, let's start by removing teams. Bama. So Alabama. Goes down to A tier. Yeah. And Clemson. USC. Hold on. USC. Hold on. Let's let's focus on S tier. Clemson. Uh, another close game against another unranked opponent. And we had teams in A tier. TCU, okay. Tennessee, Michigan get some big wins. Can we justify keeping Clemson in S tier? All right, hear me out. Okay, me uh, out. No, Nomad says weak ACC will make college football playoff, but that I don't think hear that's not out. the argument. Kyle and I are picking who we think are the best four teams. Hear me out. Move up that team in um, in yellow up to S tier. I assume you mean this one and not UCLA. Yes. Okay. Move that one up to S tier. And uh, I can't say no. And uh, swap out the two orange ones. I uh, once again, I assume you're not talking about Oklahoma State. Correct. Yep. Kyle, by, by, can, can and, you can you keep but, the audio? Kyle, can you please keep the audio listeners in mind? All right. So um, we have uh, 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 Michigan up in S tier, and then swap Clemson down to A tier and Tennessee to S tier. So the S tier, I agree right there with Jared has Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee and Michigan in your S tier. In that order? In that order. Yep. Can I make a case for TCU? No. Okay. 
All right, A tier. Uh, move USC down to B tier. After one loss? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, give, everyone... Give, 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 me, give me a good win. Give me a good win, and then you can go back to the A tier. But let's let's move them down to the the B tier. I mean, you can take you can put them where Penn State's at. So Penn Nomad, State's there at the B tier. Penn Nomad State's there at the says, B tier, and then you can move them down, and then put USC right where uh, right where Penn State was. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care about ordering B tier. That's that's too much work. Uh, Nomad asks, how do you not include TCU after that win? Because we only put four teams in S tier. I think they deserve to be in S tier after that win. The question is not, do they deserve it? It's do they deserve it more than Tennessee or Michigan? Correct. Now you say Correct. get rid. you say get rid of Michigan. Are you saying that because you're an Ohio State fan or because it's true? Uh, they just decimated Penn State. And again, I understand Penn State was not a pro was not a, an actual top 10 team, but they were. And we can say that they didn't deserve to be and probably be right, but they were. Yep. All right. And so it's not just that they beat them. It's that they totally dominated that football game. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that domination that I would put, because in my mind, Tennessee's three. So I'm not even comparing TCU to, to Tennessee. I'm comparing them to Michigan. And the difference to me was that TCU beat Oklahoma State in two overtimes and Michigan ran Penn State completely off the field. Yep, that, to me is the, that's, that to me is the difference right now. Yep. So A tier, uh, Clemson, uh, you can move Oklahoma State down to B tier. Uh, UCLA, UCLA's A tier, Alabama's A tier. I think you got to move Ole Miss now to to A tier. They're an undefeated team. I I think you got to move them up to A tier. Do we have to? I'm just saying we don't. I okay. I, I don't. So so I feel like four is an okay. I, I'm just saying. I'm going to say this. I think four is a perfectly okay and acceptable number to have at A tier. I don't think we need to feel obligated to move anyone into A tier. I'm just, I'm just saying I don't have a set. We, we only have a set number for S tier. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's keep it at that, but I think we should move one or two teams up, but Oklahoma state B tier. Uh, Ole Miss, we can come back to NC State. Uh, you can move NC State. Uh, Syracuse, still undefeated. They stay in B tier for at least one more week here. Uh, I don't think Kansas State played, so they stay put. Not, Same thing with Oregon. Uh, Kansas not. lost, so they go down. Uh, Mississippi State, I think they're fine at B tier. Uh, Wake uh, Forest. Hold, hold on. Is that the second loss for Michigan State? It's the second loss for Michigan State, isn't it? Michigan like, State. Oh, Mississippi or, State. Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. You are right. Yeah, I know they lost at Kentucky Nomad. I, I just was confirming that that was their second loss. Um, okay um wake did not play so they're fine to stay where they are and sc yep, we... they're fine there and i think usc is fine there as well man dude, is there anybody that we can move around here okay so just just for the audio folk i want to catch the audio folk up s tier who we do put in order it's the only it's the only tier that we actually put in order um we have ohio state georgia tennessee michigan Kyle, do you agree with that order? Yes. Okay, I agree. A tier, I'm not I'm not too worried about the order. Uh, we currently have TCU, Clemson, UCLA, and Alabama, which I think mm -hmm. is fine. We could have a conversation about moving Ole Miss up. 
but I don't want to move them up just because they're undefeated. Because if we do that, then like Syracuse, um, who who is who is Ole Miss's best win? What what's Ole Miss's uh, schedule? That would be against Kentucky. Second best win. Uh, Auburn. Third best win. <laughs> Georgia Tech or Vanderbilt? Oh, okay. Yeah, no. They they can stay in B, B tier for now. Um, <laughs> they can stay All in right. B tier for now. Um, Syracuse right. can stay in B tier. Oklahoma State picks up their first loss. They're excellent in B tier. Kansas State, right. Oregon, we're already in B tier. They're in B tier. Same for Wake Forest. They were already there. They didn't play this week. They right. can right. stay. USC drops from A to B uh, due to right. their let loss. Me, every single listen. team, every single team currently in A tier, with the exception of Alabama, is undefeated. Right, let me let me list some teams with one loss. Okay. Okay. That way that we do not have up here. Okay. So, uh, so Kyle is we'll now start... moving to teams that are not in our S A or B tiers. Yep. All right. So a team that's on that cusp that could probably be on the B tier. So we'll start with Penn State, who just lost. Is there but a case keeping Penn State at B tier? They they got decimated. Um all right. They'll get decimated against Ohio State in a couple weeks, and then we'll move them to M tier. All right. The next, the next team here is the Fighting Burts. I, I think they deserve to be in B tier. The one loss team um, picks up a good win against Minnesota. Um, who, who are their other wins? Uh, pulling that up right now. Uh, Virginia, Wisconsin. Wisconsin Iowa, that lovely Iowa game, and now Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, they're one of the weaker B, B tiers, but I think they deserve B tier. But okay. admittedly, one of the All weaker right. ones. All right. Uh, next here, UNC. UNC is uh, six and one. With their best wins include uh, that. Uh, Virginia Tech and Miami. And they do have the loss to Notre Dame and that close win over in Boone against Appalachian State. I'll move I'll I'll move I'll move UNC over to the to the left of to the left of the C tier, but I'm not going to move them up. All right. And the other and the other one loss team, which I'm fine not moving, is Tulane. Uh, Tulane. Um, uh, maybe yeah. maybe we get some group of five representation. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Um, who are some of the best? So are those all of the one loss teams accounted yep. for then. Yep. There um, are three, and there are there are three. Yeah, there are three two loss teams that you can. Uh, Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I forgot one. Cincinnati. There's Cincinnati as well. Okay. Um, so I, over here, I have over here on the left. I think Texas is good over here on the left. I think Penn State, Mississippi State, I think, I think you, Baylor Cincinnati. and Minnesota. Should Baylor Where's and Cincinnati Minnesota be on the there? left? Okay, I can put, I I put can Cincinnati Cincinnati. over there as well. Okay. Not um, not not in B tier, but they can kind of be left. like okay, they're, and they're they they they're they have the, one Mario left, so they're in the staging area. They're in the staging area. All right, so two losses here. So well, hold on, real quick. For, ba ba thoughts on Baylor and Minnesota, who we currently have in like the staging area over here. Um, I would say no to Baylor. Yeah, I would say no to Baylor. Baylor's gone, and who else? Oh yeah, in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's gone as well too with with the injuries that they've had too. Yeah, it's unfortunate for them, but uh, come on. What? There we go. Um okay. Baylor's and right, no since Nomad says since he should be in B. Uh no. 
Zach says Utah back to B question mark. Um, I was getting to, I was getting to two losses here. And the first two losses here is Utah. They do. They did pick up that win against USC. So they do have the loss against Florida in their first week bounced back and got some, um, uh, got some wins and then lost previous week to UCLA and got the uh, big win against USC. Now is there, yeah, I'd, I'd be fine putting them at the very back of B tier. Kyle, is it fair to say that Utah is the best two loss team in the country? Yes. All right. It, yes. Does the AP reflect that out of curiosity? It does. If Utah is a B, so is Cincy. Uh, who's, who, who's yeah. Best? Yeah. Who are Cincinnati's best wins? You want to know Cincinnati's best win? Yeah. That would be the, uh, the Hoosiers. No, they do not get to go to B tier. Okay. Yeah, it's. Utah has. It, they lost to Florida, and at the time we thought that was a good loss. In retrospect, it probably you know it, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, it, it is difficult to go that many time zones at the beginning of the year, and I can give them a bunch of excuses. They deserve those excuses. I don't know. They lost to a the UCLA other- team who is a top ten team. And they've picked up a top 10 win. How many teams can say they have a top 10 win right now? Not a lot. Not many. Not many. All right. And the rankings are based off of preseason garbage expectations. In the beginning of the year, yes. That's why, like, I wouldn't even count Ohio State as having a top 10 win over Notre Dame. Like, you can't in good conscience be like, Ohio State beat top 10 Notre Dame. Like, you can't in good conscience say that. Um, but USC was legitimately a top 10 team. And when I say legitimately a top 10 team, I mean by 2022 standards. Um, I think they're actually probably, I think they're actually a legitimate top 10 team by, by most standards. I think that they're a very talented team. They're Oklahoma. Like how many times do I got to say it? They are Oklahoma. They were always going to lose a game because they gave up too many points. That's just the Lincoln Riley modus operandi. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what Oklahoma slash USC does. It was in the cards. We knew it was going to happen. Um, yep. But that's still a very yep. talented team. And there's they can still go and disrupt someone else's season. Hell, they only have one loss. They can yeah. still make waves with one loss potentially if they get some help in the last two lost teams, Jared, Kentucky, Texas, NC state and Mississippi state, which I think can all stay where they're at right now. So, well, let me at least do this. Kentucky on the left, Cincinnati on the left. We have Texas on the left. We have UNC on the left. We'll keep Penn State on the left for now in the staging area. We're calling this the staging area now. Um, yeah. And who are the other? Move. NC State's the last one, but keep. I would just. I. They're. I'd they're done without. They're done without Leary, unfortunately. Like it's unfortunate. I think. I think NC State had a real opportunity to compete in the ACC this year. They were never going to make the playoffs. They were never going to go undefeated. But they had a real opportunity to like make waves in the conference this year. And unfortunately without Leary, that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Um, yeah, no, I, I like this, I like this, um, this tier list right now. Um, definitely can look a lot different uh, this time next week here, but yeah, I, I think, I think this is good here. I saw, I saw, I saw a, uh, a tweet uh, today, Jared from Joel Clatt. Okay. I don't have, there's a very, I don't know if there's, there's anyone, but I don't know if there's anyone in college football who I have a more like internally polarized feeling about than Joel Klatt. Sometimes I really like him and sometimes I wish he'd shut the fuck up. <laughs> and um, I can hold both of those feelings inside the same minute. 
Well, here you go, Jared. I, I think I think you have both of these feelings at the same time here. You ready? Yeah. There's a very real chance at the end of the um, conference championship game games, you will have a one. You'll have a uh, one loss Alabama team, a one loss Tennessee team, and a one loss Georgia team. And a one loss Michigan team and a zero loss Ohio State team. <laughs> and I don't know, Clemson will probably also be undefeated just because the ACC is garbage. Yeah. And a zero loss yeah, UCLA team and TCU, maybe. I don't think T I don't think TCU is good enough to go undefeated. Um no. I think while the Big 12 is wildly in, it's filled with a bunch of wildly inconsistent football teams. Um, there's still a lot of talent in that conference. Oh, uh, yeah. They will take three SEC. No, they won't. Tennessee's not going to last. We, we, we all are really high on Tennessee right now. Kyle and I included, and we should be. They just knocked off Bama. It is not, it is not often that a team knocks off Alabama. It just doesn't happen all that often. So we're very high on them right now. But this is the, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. This is either the worst or the, it's in the top three in the top three of worst Alabama teams under Nick Saban. And they're still a top team. And they're still great. That which just says so much about Alabama and Nick Saban as a program and a coach. This is still yeah. easily a top 10 football team in the country right now. But by Alabama standards, by the standards that Alabama has set for themselves, this is a bad football team. By Alabama standards. This would also be like the best team that Tennessee has had since the 90s. If if they were if they were Tennessee. Just how shit All right. works. All right, Jared. I think that is it. I think I think that is um, this week's collegiate chaos. I think we can. Um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up and we will catch you all later on thursday as we get to know our enemy yeah um i was talking a bit about how we were all watching the game together in the discord server uh no man we can hit a couple questions um let, let's let's yeah kyle let's uh let's power let's uh what's uh turbo right, real quick, the real questions. quick here Jer turbo very, the questions um Nomad asks, does Matt Campbell slide a state over and take the Nebraska job next year? We were talking about this during the social screen. Um, basically, the, the topic of conversation was, and this is wild to say this, especially for anyone who's as old as me or Kyle or, or Nomad. Is that an upgrade? Is going from Iowa State to Nebraska an upgrade? And... A lot of people were saying no in, during the conversation. And a lot of people are currently saying no in the chat. But here's the thing. Yes. Because Nebraska knows what conference Nebraska is going to be in in five years. Can Iowa State say the same thing? That's true. That's true. Uh, That's no why Nebraska asks, is a better is, job. And by the way, can Bert, pay a lot more money. Is Bert for real? Asks Nomad. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, not another question from Nomad. After six games, is two touchdowns and three interceptions a good stat for a starting quarterback? Two touchdowns and three interceptions. Jeez. Is that is that Iowa? That's got to be Iowa's quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Right. The answer um, to your question is no. Uh, Gangland here says, is there still a realistic scenario now where less than two SEC teams get into the college football playoffs, bearing chaos upsets, which, of course, can still happen? Listen, is there a realistic? <sighs> Go ahead, Kyle. 
I'm going to, I'm going to say at this point right now, I think you're looking at, you're looking at two SEC teams. I mean, you're looking at, you're looking at two of the three, Alabama, Tennessee, or Georgia. Two of those three are, are getting in bar any kind of chaos. So I think it's I, going to be like a, I think it's going to be like an Ohio state, two of those three, and then throw in, if UCLA runs the table here, something like that. I I, I disagree. Um, if UCLA, and I think they can, remains undefeated, I think that's a great case to be made. I think you can say the same thing about TCU. And by the way, what if Michigan's only loss is a close one to Ohio State by, by the end of the year? I mean, there, there is that, but the thing that you're going to look at is but again, I just, a lot of it, a lot, lot, lot of it, it's going to be biased toward what they were ranked and when and all that. But you'll look at, oh, look at the teams that Georgia, Tennessee, and Alabama played. And you're going to look at, oh, the teams that they played or played, they have a high ranking next to them. Let me just say this. We did not witness... Bama's last, we saw their first. We did not see their last loss of this regular season. This is a very flawed Alabama team. They're going to lose again. All right. Whether um, that be in the, the last... SEC championship game or during the regular season, I don't know, but we will see them lose again. Second, right, last question we will not Does... see, we will not see Tennessee get be undefeated and we will also not see Tennessee end the season with one loss. They're going to lose multiple times between now and the sec championship game. Tennessee is a very good football team, but they aren't run the schedule. Good. They beat a very flawed Alabama football team. All right. All right. That's, that's all the time we have for today, Jared. Let's go ahead and uh, end today's episode. They are the A and M of last year. I agree, Nomad. Uh, yeah. So we were talking a bit about the uh, talking about how we were watching the Alabama Tennessee game and a bunch of the other three thirty games. We had a bunch of them up on the screen during our social screen. Uh, you can be a part of our social social screen if you join our Discord server. Um, you can go to discord.thesloopcast.com. If you don't know what a Discord server is, it's kind of like a, a a gated social media. It's like it's like a group chat. It's like it's like having all your friends in a text message thread, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a little gated, it's a little gated social media place that we keep incredibly well moderated. We keep trolls out. There aren't like there's no drama or confrontations or anything like that. Um, so it's all it, it's 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 less toxic, significantly less toxic version of whatever message board or social media place where you currently experience your your college football. So if you're looking for a place to chat with people who are only giving like level headed commentary <laughs> and people aren't going for outrage clicks, if you're looking for a more pleasant social media experience for uh, communicating with fellow college football fans, especially Ohio State fans, uh, come join our Discord server. Um, and by the way, anyone in the Discord server can watch football games with us. Now, the patrons at $3 tier or higher, $3 a month or higher, the patrons get voice privileges during the social screen games. Or higher. Yes, Nomad, or higher. They get voice privileges so we can actually, you know, like on a group call, talk to each other. But also, you can just sit there and watch and listen as we watch and talk about the games for free. That's that that part's totally free. Um, so, yeah, uh, you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com and, and help support the show. This is not cheap. All of this shit that we do, um, either in money or time, computer equipment's expensive and software is expensive. Um, so you could help us out a lot with just $3 a month, which, by the way, you can pay a full year up front and it gets you something like a 12 percent discount, I believe. 
Um, so you can even save money on that $3 a month. It's even cheaper. And you also don't have to worry about like a monthly reoccurring thing, even if it's only $3, right? So, because I, I know I trying to keep those monthly recurrings down. I know we all are. It's like, it's like, uh, has anyone in here done the $3 tier recently for a full year? I think it comes out to like 32 33 34 dollars something like that um and whatever and you can be an advertiser you can you know thank thank you nomad also if you're looking to advertise on the sloopcast if you have a a small business uh feel free to hit us up and we can talk about advertising on the sloopcast um all right that's it that's the end of the show um you have done it nomad nomad used our advertising feature uh, simply to make me say things last year. It was an expensive choice, but it was it was also funny. So I, I give him credit for that. Um, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, do you have anything you want to add on before we hop out? Um, head, watch, watch the transfer portal here. Uh, right, freshman wide receiver Marcus <laughs> Allen. I just saw your is DM, inter- asshole. Is is in the um. Is in the um. Uh, has announced that he's going to the transfer portal. So keep an eye on Marcus Allen. There you go. All right. That's the end of the show. Um, With, uh, yeah, the tonight's ending band will be the Ohio weather band. And um, they're a, they're a folksy band from, I think like the Athens area of Ohio, if I remember correctly. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Ohio Weather Band.